Welcome to Astro Babble. I'm Donna from Donna B Astrology. And I'm Linda from Scullywang Astrology. And today we are going to be talking about all of the transits and the big planetary events for the sign of Capricorn. Mm -hmm. And that's Capricorn Ascendant. For the year of 2024. Yes, for Sorry. 2024. For the Capricorn Ascendants, yeah. we recommend that you listen to your Ascendant sign rather than your Sun or Moon sign. And if you don't understand why, we've done a video all about that, and we'll put a link to that in the description. And the first planet we are going to be talking about is Mercury. And Mercury is in charge of commerce and um, messengers and how we travel. So uh, Mercury is the fastest planet, so it's going to squeak out four retrogrades this year only because it's literally ending it's Mercury retrograde on the 1st of January. So our first retrograde is going to happen. It's going to start December 13th in Capricorn in December, and then it's going to go direct in January, January 1st. So it's going to go through your first and your 12th house. So it's going to be in your 12th house. You might start seeing some things of what a Mercury retrograde is going to be doing and it's going to go to your first house, then it's going to go back into your 12th house. So those are the, that is how Mercury will be traveling for you. The first director grade period. And then from the 1st of April to the 25th of April, Mercury will be retrograde in Aries, which is your fourth house. The fourth house is our parents and family. It is our home or living situation and real estate matters. It's also heritage and stuff like that. So when Mercury is retrograde, you can expect mix-ups, miscommunications, snafus, delays. Yeah, so there may be some miscommunications with parents. There could be delays in matters to do with real estate or where you live. You know, you might be looking to move into somewhere, but you can't move in because for whatever reason, you know, you were hoping to move in on the 15th and you can't move into the 22nd or something. Yeah, so or it's possible you could hear from long lost relatives, people that you don't see very often, because sometimes Mercury retrograde can bring people associated with the house that it's retrograding back into your life. But yeah, anything that you kind of maybe buy for the house, or if you're doing something like some sort of alteration to the house, you know, it may take a couple of goes to get it right. It's just one of those things it's sometimes it takes two or three goes to get it right and then mercury will be stationing retrograde august 4th 2024 in virgo and then it will station direct august 28th in leo and that's going to be going through your ninth and eighth houses so the ninth house is you know all about uh higher education foreign travel so you know keep an keep an eye if you are planning on foreign travel mercury retrograde will catch up with you and the eighth house is is other people's money so those will be the the areas you know you might be expecting a inheritance but it's going to take longer because of you know paperwork and all that sort of jazz and if you're traveling i speak as a capricorn ascendant who traveled <laughs> during a mercury retrograde in the ninth expect delays Mercury will be retrograde from the 25th of November to the 15th of December 2024 in Sagittarius, which is your 12th house. The 12th house is the house of our undoing. So this can include things like addictions or the self-defeating habits, escapism. It's also places of confinement like hospitals or prisons. It's places of retreat, uh, which can be like you know, a spiritual retreat, or it can be just locking yourself away and working on something. So there may be delays, mishaps, or miscommunications regarding those matters. You know, maybe you've got a hospital appointment and, well, this literally happened to my son not, well, six months ago or something. You know, we went to the hospital, he had a, an appointment, and they're kind of like, hmm, well, no, we cancelled that. Didn't anybody call you? And they're kind of like, no. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, that sort of thing might happen. Or it could be, for some, maybe a relapse. You know, maybe you kind of 
uh, trying to kick a habit and uh, maybe you relapse, but maybe, you know, that's what they say, things like quitting smoking, stuff like that. The more times you try, the closer you get to actually quitting. So when Mercury or any planet retrogrades, it's going back over old ground. And sometimes, hopefully, there's a purpose for that in that it makes us, you know, look at things closer, uh, pay more attention and um, hopefully get a better outcome out of it. And the next planet we will be talking about is Venus. And Venus is all about beauty. She she tries to bring the things of the social graces, the social interactions, love, art, and those kinds of things. Comfort as well. She will be making an ingress or entering into your uh, first house in Capricorn on January 23rd. And the first house is, 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 is about, you know, about yourself. And so this would be a good time for you to update a wardrobe, a hairstyle, anything that you're doing personally for yourself. She is one of the two benefic planets that are in the universe. She's called the bright one. So that is a, um, it's a, it's a good thing when Venus is, is makes an entrance into your first house, you can expect a benefit and things that you work on should turn out nicely if you are trying to beautify or do a Venusian thing to yourself so beautify do art social yeah everybody's just gonna love you <laughs> <laughs> actually i've got a story about this because being a capricorn ascendant i've got a friend who's a capricorn son and round about late january mid to late january every year and i mean admittedly you know everybody's thinking about new, new year's resolutions and all that sort of thing but it's kind of like, you know, oh, we need to revamp ourselves and wardrobe and all this sort of thing. And, you know, when you realize that Venus and Mercury are always close to the sun and uh, it's hitting her sun, which is all about her, and it's um, hitting my ascendant, which is all about your appearance and that it makes sense that <laughs> generally this time of year, it's, oh, my God, we need a new wardrobe and what are we going to do? And yeah, anyway. From February 16th to March 11th, Venus is going to be in Aquarius in your second house, which is a really nice house to have a benefic in. Venus is a benefic planet. It brings good things along with Jupiter. That's the other benefic. But Venus is going to be in your second house of income, finances, and resources. So when Venus is in a house, she usually brings good things. So there may be a bonus, some extra money, maybe just a nice gift, or maybe for some, you know, your finances are just not giving you any um, issues at this time. And then March 11th, Venus will be moving into Pisces. That's your third house. In this sign, Venus is exalted. She has tools. She has friends that will support her and help her accomplish the goals that she's setting out to do. So the Venusian things uh, in the third house could look like getting together with your siblings, maybe even buying a new car. Uh <laughs> This would be uh, something that has to do with community, early education, or all where you can see Venus show up nicely for you in your third house. And then from April 4th to April 29th, Venus will be in Aries, which is your fourth house. Fourth house is our parents, our home, living situation, and real estate matters. It's also our heritage. So... During this time, your relationship with your parents should be pretty good. Just a nice, harmonious time. During this time, if you are socializing, you may prefer to be doing that in your home. Uh, great time to beautify your home in some way, whether that's a major redecorating project or just buying some throw cushions and, or, you know, new bed linen or something, something nice. So very nice for when Venus is there. And then on April 29th, Venus is going to move into the sign of Taurus, and that's their fifth house. And Taurus is a sign that she rules. So she's going to have all of the tools that she needs to have accessible to her to get her goal um, accomplished. And in the fifth house is the house of your children. Uh, this is also the house of your hobbies and um, things that you do for fun. This could look like... Uh, you know, a benefit to one of your children. This could also look like a benefit of some kind. If So if you were waiting for concert tickets, they might come in through, you know, now, right about now. Or if you're going to go see an art show, so this is definitely Venus um, showing up in your life in the fifth house in those areas. 
Yeah. And Venus has a joy in the fifth. So doubly blessed there. That's right, yeah. From May 23rd to June 17th, Venus will be in Gemini in your sixth house. This is your day-to-day -day, um, work. It's service to others. It is also illness. Uh, it includes co-workers, those that um, work for you, whether that's employees or somebody who you supervise in some capacity. And service to others can include things like people that work for the good of society, doctors, nurses, first responders, etc. And did I include pets? I'm not sure. But if I didn't, I'm including it now. So yeah, so look, could be a new pet. It could be just really nice time with co-workers or employees. You could benefit through um, these people or these um, things. I mean, maybe you've got a pet and you put it into a show and it wins first prize. But yeah, generally speaking, Venus brings harmony, you know, generally speaking. And um, yeah, just ease and it's just nice. If um, there is an illness, perhaps there is a easing at this time, or maybe it's coming to an end. And then on June 17th, Venus is going to move into Cancer, and Cancer is your seventh house. And Cancer is the emotional sign, so uh, expect Venus to act a little bit more emotionally with your one-on-one -on -one relationships one-on-one -on -one relationships is the seventh house and that will be relationships so you should have a benefit either with um your partner uh your your significant other or your or your business partner or any of the other one-on-one -on -one relationships that you might and you know have in your life you know such as a hairdresser a dentist a doctor lawyer yeah so you should expect to benefit, even though it'll be a little bit emotional. It is, um, still should be a benefit. And from July 11th to August 4th, Venus will be in Leo, which is your eighth house of other people's money. So you may benefit in some way through other people. This may be a partner because the eighth house is the money of a partner, whether that's a business or a romantic partner. It could be you benefit through loans. Maybe you've applied for a loan and it's approved. Maybe you are approved for more than you realized or hoped for. Uh, inheritances are an eighth house matter. Uh, taxes and insurance. So, you know, maybe you put in an insurance claim and you were kind of like, mm, will they, won't they? And it comes back and it's, you know, a little bit bigger than you expected or in the case of taxes, maybe you do get a refund or it's not as high a bill as you were expecting. Nice. <laughs> and then August 4th, Venus is going to move into the sign of Virgo and that's going to move into your ninth house. And the ninth house is all about um, higher education as well as foreign travel, the esoteric subjects uh, like astrology or tarot, and as well as um, publishing um, so those are the types of things where you're going to have a benefit in those areas, even though she's, uh, she's not, she's a little uncomfortable in this sign. She really doesn't like Virgo. Uh, I think she's in fall in this sign. So, um, not as, not as good, but she still is going to give you a benefit somewhere around those themes. And then from August 29th to the 22nd of September, Venus will be in Libra in your 10th house. This is the most visible house in your chart. So the 10th house is career and public reputation. It's what you're known for. So when it comes to work, things should be a lot more harmonious. Things tend to go well with Venus in the 10th. People find you approachable and likable. You may benefit through your work or through um, employers or bosses because it is also the house of authority figures, or you may be honored or recognized in some way, and that might have anything to do with your work. It might be for something else you do outside of work, but for whatever reason, you're being recognized or honored or rewarded in some way. It's also possible that uh, you are become involved with somebody through the workplace, whether that's uh, a boss, a coworker, or a client or a customer or something like that. 
That is that looks very, very nice for the Capricorns with Libra in the 10th. That's where you're that's how you're known. And and she's gonna have just her own sign. So wow. In the tenth house, that's that's a really lucky placement there for Capricorns. So September 22nd, she moves into Scorpio, and this is not where she uh, feels comfortable, as it is uh, ruled by Mars. And um, this is the 11th house. You're, so it's friends and associates, it's um, groups, in, and your hopes and dreams as well. But she is still a benefic. She does not have the same tools that she had um, in her last house, where she ruled. This is this is the house where she's kind of confined. She's in she's definitely in detriment here or exile, however you want to say it. She she just does not have the tools, but still you should see a benefit. And she is called the bright one. And this is the eleventh house of your hopes and dreams. So hopefully you will find some goodness there. And from October 17th to November 11th, Venus will be in Sagittarius in your 12th house. The 12th house is the house of our undoing. It is also secret and hidden places or places of exile, places of confinement, such as prisons or hospitals, and places of retreat. So you may have benefit through one of those uh, subjects. You may become involved with somebody through those subjects. Maybe you become romantically involved with somebody who works at a hospital or a prison or a retreat. Maybe you go on a retreat and find that um, very beneficial to you in general. Or for some people, this is a time where, you know, you want to kind of hide away with that special someone and not be as visible. And nice. when it comes to matters of self-undoing, hopefully Venus will be able to ease that somewhat. You know, if you're battling addictions or something, maybe this is some help. Another way you could read it in Sagittarius, Jupiter ruled. So Jupiter does like to go overboard. I'm wondering if it could be Venusian topics could be your downfall, but I wouldn't expect that for everyone. I would expect you'd have to have a lot of things going on in your chart to have that be the case. And then on November 11th, she's going to move into Capricorn. And that's going to be in your first house. It's the house of yourself. So this is a good time to, you know, change that hairstyle, get into wardrobe. You had it earlier in the year. So you're very lucky to be able to have Venus go through your first house in, you know, twice in one year. This is a really nice benefit. And then from December 7th, Venus will be in Aquarius in your second house. So again, you know, maybe there's a bonus through work. You know, it, this is your house of your income and finances and resources so maybe somebody gifts you something that's extremely useful or maybe just your relationship with your personal finances are just easier at this time and then the next planet we're going to be talking about is mars and mars is in charge of you know the drive that we have in our lives he is the one that gives us the aggression and the bravery and the leadership skills as well he also is in charge of separation and iron accidents and impatience. So, so when he acts in a negative way, um, that's how Mars shows up. But he, Mars can also show up in a positive way. So going with that, uh, Mars will be moving into the sign of Capricorn. And that's going to be in your first house. And that's going to be happening on January 4th. And you know, in Capricorn, Mars is, is exalted. So he has a little bit more tools. So hopefully he'll be acting a little bit better, but still, you know, even though it's your first house, that's, that can be, that can have a little bit of your vitality. So make sure you're thinking about, you know, accidents and, you know, that courage and how you're, how you're using Mars, because you, you want to stay safe as well. So just act with a little bit of caution in your first house uh from february 13th to march 22nd mars will be in aquarius which is your second house of personal finances and income when mars is in the second house it does tend to burn a bit of a hole in your pocket you tend to like making that money but you're spending it just as quick one way that you could try to mitigate that is by actively proactively doing the what's the word i want to say slicing but uh, cutting 
itself. So maybe if you decide, okay, I'm going to go through a budget and uh, cut this, this and this out of my um, spending, uh, that might be an actual proactive way to kind of remediate having Mars in the second. I like that. That is a really nice way to add to use Mars to cut out excessive spending ah that's great so mm-hmm. march 22nd <laughs> march i was just thinking sometimes i'm sorry i'm just thinking sometimes it might actually be forced on you you might overspend and then you have to cut back so yeah mm. oh sure oh sure <laughs> yeah 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 um yeah for sure so march 22nd he's going to move into pisces and pisces is in your third house you know this is the house of short communication as well as your brothers and sisters, cousins, extended family. And uh, this is also the house of early education. So, you know, you want to use this with a little bit of caution. You know, when you're in driving in your car, you know, just take the extra caution. Don't take the risks um, because, you know, Mars, Mars likes to hurry up and get it done and we'll think about it later. So try to think about it a little bit ahead of time before any accidents occur. So. That's that's kind of my advice for March 22nd to April 30th. Mm-hmm. And from April 30th to June 8th, Mars will be in Aries, which is a sign that he rules. So Mars is quite comfortable here and it's in your fourth house. The fourth house is our parents, home and family, our living situation and real estate matters. So there's a possibility there could be more fighting or just irritation with regard to those matters. One way to kind of try and mitigate that would be do something physical around the house. You know, there's always something to do around the house, you know, something physical or try and do something physical with the people that you live with. You know, if you don't want to be renovating and let's face it, who does? (laughs) Maybe, you know, go out for a walk every evening or something you know and then june 8th mars is going to be moving into taurus and taurus is going into your fifth house and or taurus is your fifth house and taurus is not a sign there he's very comfortable he doesn't have any dignity in this house um it's run by venus so you know that issue they have between them venus and mars Yeah, but in the fifth house, Mars is asking you to get moving on your hobby. So if you have a hobby of, you know, sports and stuff like that, this would be a good time to sign up for this. This would, that would, that's how that could be, um, show up in your life. This could also, um, I think Linda had mentioned earlier on another episode that when Mars goes into your fifth house, Mm -hmm. you know, if you have children to be careful of them because they can get into accidents. So you know, that is a, you know, you just want to have that, ca- those cautions around whenever Mars is in your house. From July 20th to September 4th, Mars will be in Gemini, which is your sixth house. So this is a house of pets. It's also those that work for us, whether that's employees or somebody that you have some sort of authority over at work. It uh, is service to others, so it can include people that work for the general public, such as doctors, nurses, first responders, and illness. So for some, if you've been undergoing an illness, Mars is associated with cutting and surgery. Maybe you are undergoing surgery at this time. In Gemini, Gemini rules the hands, so maybe, you know, watch particularly dogs, (laughs) Uh, pets might be a little bit more bitey at this time and you know if you're playing with a dog you know maybe you kind of get nipped on the fingers just something to be aware of and it's not going to happen to everybody of course but something to be aware of the sixth house is our kind of day-to-day kind of running around too it's kind of like all those things you have to do third house is very similar in that it's kind of day-to-day stuff Uh, but it can be daily routine so It can be just the speed of what you need to do in your day-to-day life can be accelerated and it can, um, that can lead to, you know, a little bit more anxiety or just kind of edginess. So yeah, something to watch out for there too. Yeah. I like that. Um, when you said the fingers, you know, Gemini, that's all the way up to the arms. So Mm. all the way up to the shoulders. So be careful of your arms (laughs) in, in, in your sixth house. You want, you don't want those 
You need your arms a lot, I think. <laughs> Anyways, September 4th, um, Mars will be moving into Cancer, and Cancer is your seventh house. And this is the house of the other. So you want to be careful of you know, aggressive words towards your significant other and in, in the people you have the one-on-one -on -one relationships. This is where Mars could show up. This Mars could also show up, you know, very easily with not only aggression, but, uh, you know, doing something with them, you know, going for those, those walks or, or, you know, using, doing something physical and active with your, um, a significant partner would be an, a, a very good expression of Mars. So, and, uh, yeah. And and in cancer, it's emotional, so it's it it won't be a far reach to get there. <laughs> and from November third, Mars is going to be in Leo, which is the eighth house. The eighth house is other people's money. So with Mars there, there might be fights about shared finances and resources. This also includes things like inheritances. So maybe you found out you're inheriting, everything's going fine, and somebody challenges the will. It could be, you know, you apply for a, a loan and it's either rejected or it's not as much as you want. You know, you wanted X amount and they're kind of like, well, we'll give you X less this amount. It also includes things like taxes and superannuation. Well, superannuation means nothing to you guys. It's like a 401k. Insurances. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what is, <laughs> what is superannuation? Uh, yeah, so... Interesting that seventh house matters, which Donna was just talking about, which is all about the partner and eighth house matters, which I was just talking about other people's money, which can include the partner's money are uh, going to be what has to be gone over because Mars is going to retrograde. So starting from the 5th of October, when the shadow period starts, you might if you kind of run into issues, just kind of start paying attention from 5th of October because you might be going back over those matters. Yeah. Yeah. Mars is going to retrograde from six degrees Leo and um, and it's going to go to 17 degrees Cancer. So those are the degrees that you're going to be anything, any planets in, in between those two, those degrees may possibly be affected, probably are likely to be affected. <laughs> mm -hmm. I won't skirt around that probably are likely to be affected, but um, yeah, that's, those are the, that's the retrograde. And, and as Linda said earlier, from October 5th to May 2nd is when you're going to, when you could possibly feel any of those Mars retrograde kind of themes where you have to readdress stuff. Yeah. And because Mars is all about energy and drive and ambition and all that, Mars just wants to go. It just wants to move. And when a planet is retrograde, it's it appears to be going backwards from our perspective on Earth. And, you know, Mars doesn't want to go backwards. So this can be a really frustrating time between the 5th of October and the 2nd of May. If you do have planets between those degrees, it's more likely to um, significantly affect you rather than if you've got no planets at those degrees. Yes, it's probably going to be delays and, you know, it's frustrating, but not as dramatically as for some other people, I think. And that retrograde is going to be in the seventh and the eighth house. So mm. that's where you're going to. Yeah. Other people's money. Direct your attention. <laughs> other people's money and um, shared finances and resources or all about the partner. And they could be two separate events that kind of come up for review, or it could be a combination. It could be all joined together. Just depends. And then the next planet we are going to be talking about is Jupiter. And Jupiter is the second benefic planet that we have in our universe. Uh, he is in charge of expansion, generosity, future thinking, you know, the big picture. He, that's where he's going for. He's going to participate in a conjunction with Uranus on April 20th uh, at 21 degrees of Taurus. And that's going to happen in your fifth house. When Jupiter and Uranus conjunct together, they act kind of like um, Jupiter wants to expand and Uranus is in charge of, of, of shocking or revolutionary thought. So this could be very exciting times. This is going to happen 12 days after a, an eclipse. So I think, I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of energy around this and this, uh, planetary combination is just going to highlight the whole, like what's going on. So this is going to be happening in your fifth house. 
it's not a retrograde. So anything, but this is so you could, you could find some new ways of looking at uh, fifth house topics like children or your hobbies or the things that you do for fun. So you're having an opportunity to expand on them, revolutionize them and uh, look at them in a new way. So this is, it should be very interesting. It doesn't seem as frightening in the in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Though I was just thinking, um, you could also look at the houses that Jupiter rules, and for Capricorn ascendants, that's the uh, third house, but also the twelfth. So, but yeah, look, mm. you know, hopefully it should be, you know, not too bad. And you know, Uranus has been in Taurus for a long time, so we're all getting used to wherever you, you know Taurus is and the different ascendants. Uh, sign charts they've had Uranus there for a while this might be just yeah Jupiter really kicking it up a notch so it should be interesting Jupiter is going to move into Gemini though Jupiter moves into Gemini on the 25th of May into your sixth house so the sixth house is our pets it is illness it is service to others and it includes people that work in service of um, society in general, like doctors, nurses, first responders, etc. And it is those that work for you and um, quite often co-workers. So Jupiter, it does kind of big things up. It enlarges, it wants to expand. So there could be, you know, more co-workers or more pets or for some, it may be an additional illness. Hopefully not. It is Jupiter. It is benefic. Um, you may need to watch your weight at this time. Jupiter in the sixth, I'm just thinking, you know, you could really put on some weight, though Jupiter in the first is very similar because that's our appearance and health and vitality. But you may put on too much weight, which kind of, you know, leads to problems with maybe your knees or something. Yeah. And Jupiter in Gemini, it's not as strong as it uh, has been in some other signs. It is in detriment here. It's as far away from its natural home as it can be. So it's ruled by Mercury, which is all about drilling down into the details and all that sort of stuff, interested in the minutiae and all that, whereas Jupiter is much more big picture orientated. So, hmm. but look, you'll have it there for... 12 months and um you know it should bring some good things you know maybe more pets maybe a big big pet <laughs> very possibly very possibly and then uh jupiter is going to go through a retrograde period and he's going to go retrograde at 21 degrees gemini and on october 9th and then he's going to station direct at 11 degrees gemini so he doesn't really move far uh, only 10 only 10 degrees that's going to happen on February 4th. And this is all going to happen in your sixth house. The sixth house is, you know, like Linda was talking about, this is where you're going to be revisiting those, um, those Jupiterian issues. So if maybe you were, you were gaining weight, this would be a time to readdress, you know, getting back down to the weight that you want to be. You're just readdressing those Jupiterian issues. Yeah. And Jupiter is all about enthusiasm and optimism and all that too. When it's retrograde, that can be a little bit um, in short supply. I mean, maybe you're really excited to be adopting a dog or a cat or some pet. And, you know, you find out, no, you can't at this time for whatever reason. You know, that could be disappointing or, you know, you knew somebody who was going to do something for you and they can't. And yeah, but quite often the retrograde period allows you to go back and reformulate those plans hopefully for the better and the next planet we're talking about is saturn and saturn is the other malefic planet in our universe uh saturn is in charge of rules and holding back as far in restriction barriers and maybe even not now you know, so uh, Saturn is the more somber of the planets. Uh, he affects you more towards, you know, more of a somber kind of a, of a mood than Mars is, you know, uppity, uppity. And then Saturn is kind of brings you down. And that's the that's the energy of those two planets. And they work like that. Um, and Saturn remains in Pisces. Uh, he it does not have the same ability. Uh, 
ability that he had the last five years when he was in his own rulership signs. And he will remain in your third house uh, for this entire year. So the third house is, has a lot to do with your community, your siblings, your language. This is a time for restrictions. So you might have, you know, you might not be able to get that car that you wanted to get or, um, or there might be delays in travel or, you know, or delays in your data, you know, in, in, in whatever errands that you might be running, there might be delays, you know, more delays in your third house, in your community than normally. Yeah. One way I'm trying to mitigate this because I'm a Capricorn ascendant is to actually start reading more because, you know, that's kind of like a third house topic. And, you know, hopefully doing a short course, which is, again, another third house topic. We do have Saturn retrograde from the 29th of June until the 15th of November. Saturn's retrograde every year. And this year, that's the date that it's going to be retrograde. As um, Saturn is remaining in Pisces this year, this will be happening in your third house. So if you had plans, you may need to, it's just, you know, delays, limitations, disappointment. It's just, they may seem insurmountable at this time. You may be planning something and you knew that it was going to take time. And I mean, you're a Capricorn ascendant, you know all about this, <laughs> but you know, you knew it would take time and that there will be things to overcome and all this, but sometimes it just seems like, you know, it's not two steps forward, one step back. Sometimes it feels like one step forward, two steps back. And that's what this can feel like. But it's a matter of whatever issue is being held back to all delay, just try and readdress it, look and see what you can do. There may actually be a benefit in the long run redoing this or, you know, sometimes you just kind of got to wait and that's what it's about. The next planet we're talking about is Pluto, and Pluto is in charge of transformation. He is the planet of, you know, the fire and the in the flames, the phoenix rising, the the things to get out of your life that no longer are serving you. He also is in charge of intensity. He's in charge of intensity. Uh, he is the um, ruler of Scorpios in the modern sense. He wants to make small things big or big things small. So he does a lot of that you know, transformation and get out and, you know, get, get things out of your life that, that are, are no, are, aren't working for you. So he can be a difficult planet. He moves the slowest. Uh, he will, he's doing this dance. He's trying to get into Aquarius and he's, he's been in Capricorn for since 2008. And uh, he was um, briefly in Aquarius in your second house, uh, March 23rd to June 11th. And then he moved back into your first. So he's trying to get out. It, just be patient. It's He is trying to transform, to, to, to change your life, to make you grow. That's the that's the um, the job, I think, of Pluto, is, is trying to get you to advance to whatever your soul's path is. Pluto re-enters Capricorn for the last time from the 1st of September, and it will be there until the 19th of November, 2024. So particularly for Capricorns at the very late degrees, say 28, 29 degrees, this will be the final hit because Pluto moves so slowly. It's kind of like, you know, goes forward a couple of degrees, goes backwards, goes forward a couple of degrees, goes backwards. So sometimes if you allow a degree either side, it's kind of hitting, if you've got, well, for you, your ascendant, but particularly if you've got um, planets in the first house as well, it's been knocking them around. So it's finally going to move. And after the 19th of November, 2024, it's not coming back for another 240 something years. So that's good news. The first house is your appearance. And it's also your health and vitality. So for many people since 2008, those are issues that have been worked on. You may be very different. I mean, we're all very different from 2008. But for Pluto going through your first house is a pretty significant thing because the first house is all about us. It's essentially us. It's how people view us. It's our appearance, but it's also that health and vitality. Say goodbye to... You may have already done your major changing. Yeah. This might be wrapping up some details, but 
particularly for people at the very late degrees, it's finishing. It's mm. leaving. <laughs> and it's going to stay in your second house until March 8th of 2043. So you'll have plenty of time to get used to it there. So, you know, Pluto moving into the second house, you know, as Donna was saying, can make big things small and small things big. Pluto can kind of bring obsession with it too. So there may be a very, very strong focus on your personal finances and income. So it's something that's likely over the next 20 something years to have a little bit more special interest. The next major uh, planetary aspects are going to happen are the eclipses and the eclipses are pretty, pretty spectacular this year for us in the United States. Um, we're going to start off with the lunar eclipse um, on March 25th, 2024. Uh, it's going to happen at five degrees Libra, and this is going to be in your 10th house. And eclipses are known to bring things in or take things out of your life. And in your 10th house, this is, you know, around career or what you're known for. This is kind of where it's going to be happening for you. And the next eclipse, this is going to be the second leg of the eclipse that is making an X over the United States. We had the first one, October 14th of 2023. This one is going to be happening April 8th of 2024. And this is, the, it's going to complete like, like there was one line of the X going from like Oregon to Northern South America. And then this eclipse on April 8th is going to go from basically Hawaii, kind of like in that area to like New England, that area. So it's going to cut across and it's going it's, it's to actually form an X right over San Antonio, Texas in the United States. So, and this is going to be happening on April 8th, 2024 at 19 degrees Aries. And this is going to be in your fourth house. And the fourth house is about your, your parents or your own home or your living situations. And so that's where you might find these eclipses are, are manifesting at. And but the um, eclipses typically, when they are present on a on, on a continent, whatever country is able to see them is where it really kind of manifests and shows up. So this is going to be definitely one to watch for us in the in the United States. And Linda and I did a, a video on eclipses, and hopefully you will post a link to that. So if you're interested on eclipses and how they kind of form and and why they're what's the difference between the total and and the annual or that's that's the video that you need to watch so yeah and eclipses solar eclipses uh come in what we call saros series and they're like a family they go for about 1300 years and every 18 years you have a solar eclipse in the same saros series so there could be a linking between events of an eclipse and events from 18 years ago. And I can see that Donna's got the information there about this solar eclipse, the 8th of April one. Do you want to tell us about it? Yes. We use the book um, Bernadette Brady authored, um, Predictive Astrology, The Eagle and the Lark. It's our, it's what we consider our eclipse Bible. And it's got all of the Sero series um, listed and their, their, their flavor of each series, um, what it's going to, what it's going to look like. And so this is going to, is this actually coming from the Sero series eight North and it, resembles inventiveness and flashes of genius are the hallmark of this Sarah series. The individual will have intuitive leaps, insights, good ideas, visions, or vivid dreams. This newfound inspiration will pull the person away from his or her social life or relationship, thereby causing strain in the private life. This is a time when the person needs to be free, if only for a few weeks. It's a great one. And this hit might be reflective of um, 1934, 1952, 1970, 1988, and 2006. So if you can remember like those 18 year increments, what was happening, um, it might, it might show up, uh, again in your life in that same way. So, and, uh, with all eclipses, if you have natal planets or chart points, so ascendant MC, etc., that are close to the eclipse degrees, it's likely to be more significant. The next eclipse we have is a lunar eclipse on the 17th of September, which will be the first of the Pisces Virgo eclipses. We've been having eclipses in the Aries Libra ones, 
over the fourth and tenth house, but they're coming to an end. They don't end officially until March next year when we have the last of the Aries eclipses. But we are, this is the start of the Pisces Virgo ones, which will be across your third and ninth house. So this one may have something to do with siblings because siblings are a third house manner. Also your local neighborhood, neighbors, communications, short courses, early education and communications in general. And then we have nice. the last of the Libra eclipses, which is another solar eclipse on the 2nd of October, 2024 at 10 degrees Libra. And that will be in the 10th house. So this will be the last eclipse in your house of career and public reputation. And Donna, do you have the information for the Saros series? I do. Again, this is from Bernadette Brady's book, Predictive Astrology, The Eagle and the Lark. And, and she has written, this is the flavor of separation and loss, to be parted, to finish something, and to feel sad at its completion. Physical injury is also possible through overstraining one's strength. This is not the time to undertake strenuous physical activities. So there's a definite warning there. Um, and this will also have the flavor of 1934, 1952, 1970, 1988, and 2006. So, you know, remember back if anything happened during those years, during around those eclipse times, mm. this could, again, you could revisit it. Yes, very interesting. So that's 2024 for Capricorn Ascendance. We hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Uh, we do fortnightly or every two weeks, we do a full moon or a new moon uh, horoscope. We look at the full moon, have a look, see what it's up to. We do horoscopes for each of the 12 signs. And then we look at the aspects between the planets in the next two weeks, all the major aspects. So if that's something that interests you, do subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. And Donna, what are you doing? And um, where can people find you? Um, I am doing uh, natal readings for horoscopes, um, as well as the year ahead, electional horary, uh, a little bit of medical <laughs> and I also do crystal healing. So I also do, I also bring a stone to every one of those fortnight yes. things and tell you a little bit about the stones that I work with What um, stone is yeah, that? for energy healing. What stone is that? This is, this is lazulite. I've never, I've never, I haven't brought this one on yet. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, this is lazulite. Um, yeah. So I, I'll explain, I'll explain those and sometimes, you know, why I use them and how I use them and, uh, for stone energy healing. So you can get a hold of me at Donna B astrology.com. Uh, I also, you can email me at Donna bar consulting, uh, at gmail.com. So that's kind of what I do. And Linda, what have, what are you doing and, uh, how can people get a hold of you? I'm at Scullywag Astrology. That's astrology.scullywag.com. And I offer year ahead relationship and natal readings. So, yes. Very nice. Happy 2024 Capricorn Ascendance. And um, I hope it's good to you. And Happy New Year, Capricorn. <laughs>